Hello everyone, my name is Katya and in this video I'm going to share a few tips on how to write a successful statement of purpose when you're applying to PG programs in the United States. This video will be organized as follows. We will understand what statement of purpose is and how important it is for your PG application. And then I'll share a few examples of the different prompts that you might encounter. After that we will delve into how to best structure your statement of purpose. And I will end this video with a few tips that will hopefully make your statement of purpose stronger. As always, feel free to skip around with the time steps that I provided in the video description so you can save a bit of time. Let's get started. So why should you listen to me? I'm an incoming PhD student at Harvard in the applied math program and I went through the PhD admissions process myself last year and while I was applying to different programs I talked to a bunch of PhD students on how to make my application stronger, particularly how to make my statement of purpose stronger and I received a lot of feedback and a lot of advice. Now I feel like I have enough knowledge and information that I didn't know when I was applying and that I think might be useful to you as well. So what is a statement of purpose? It's basically an essay that you write when you apply to PG programs in the US and the goal of this statement is to show that you are qualified for your PGD studies and to show why you're a good fit for a particular graduate program that you are applying to. This is an essay where you talk about your previous research experience, what research interests you currently have and want to pursue in graduate school and what professors you might want to work with. And this this essay is read by professors in the department that you're applying to. You should keep your target audience in mind when you're crafting your essay. So how important is your statement of purpose? I would say it's pretty important. I talked to a couple of my professors who are graduate admissions directors at different programs at Princeton and they told me that they pay a lot of attention to these kinds of essays because they can provide a cohesive story about an applicant and can tell more than what's written on your CV. So one of my professors, he actually recommended me including a little bit of like personal information on my essay as well, in addition to talking about my research experiences. Basically, it is your opportunity to tell a story about how your research interests evolved over time and how they led you to where you currently are and how it shaped your vision for what kind of work you want to do in the future. So here are a few examples of prompts for this essay. It actually depends on the program that you're applying to how academic and research focus your essay need to be. In most programs, I would say you have to focus on your research experience and be very professional and not talk about any of your personal experiences and stuff like that. That might have also shaped your trajectory, but this is not something that some of the graduate programs might look for. On the other hand, some other programs, they provide additional prompts, additional essays that you have to write where you can basically share your personal experiences in a bit more detail. So it really depends on the program, but I would say that the focus of your statement of purpose should be your research experience, what you have done in the past, your accomplishments, and what you want to do in the future. Plus a little bit of additional information about yourself that makes you unique and a strong candidate for your particular program. How long should the statement of purpose be? Again, it depends on the program that you're applying to, but generally it should be somewhere between one and a half and two pages, single spaced. It shouldn't be too long because otherwise professors aren't gonna read it. And before you apply to PG programs, you should definitely ask your friends who might be in graduate school right now and see if they can share their examples of their own statements of purpose that they wrote because it can be extremely valuable to see an actual example. You can also just try googling online and I'm sure you'll find a couple of examples. Now let's move on to the structure of your statement of purpose. I will be speaking mostly from my own experience and I'll share a few paragraphs from my own statement of purpose that I submitted to Harvard. You will want to start your statement of purpose with a strong and concise introduction. Your introduction should be a succinct pitch of who you are, uh, what kind of research you are passionate about, and how your PhD status will help you reach your career and academic goals in the future. So here is what I wrote for my introduction. I'm proud to be a first-generation Russian immigrant in the US, a woman mathematician, and an active researcher focused on ethical artificial intelligence. My dream is to build a future where artificial intelligence empowers humanity, making research and innovation accessible to all. With a degree in applied mathematics from Harvard's School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, I aspire to become an interdisciplinary researcher and a social entrepreneur. I think a good strategy is that at the very beginning of your statement of purpose, you 
give a big picture of your vision for the future or what you want to do as opposed to focusing on specific projects that you might want to work on during your PhD. And the main bulk of your statement of purpose should be a description of all of your previous research experiences or rather probably not all of your research experiences but the most significant ones where you achieved the most results and you're most proud of or that are most relevant to what you want to do in the future in your graduate program. And for each project that you want to mention in your statement of purpose, you should always start by providing the motivation for your research. Provide the big picture of why you were interested in studying a particular research question, as opposed to just immediately going into the details of what you actually have done and the tools that you've used and the skills that you've learned. I think a good structure of a statement of purpose would be as follows. So there is an introduction and then the next paragraphs are your research experience. So one paragraph per each research experience and then there is a conclusion. In each paragraph you start with the motivation, the big picture of why you were doing a particular research project, why it is important. Just imagine that the professors who are reading your applications, they aren't necessarily experts in whatever you've been working on. So you have to motivate whatever you have done in the past. After you provided motivation, you can mention a few results that you've achieved. Maybe you've had a publication or a poster presentation or you went to a conference. All of this is extremely valuable to mention in your statement of purpose. And you can also mention any kind of honors that you might have received in college. In addition to talking about your previous research experiences, you can also mention relevant classes that you have taken. So for example, if you're going into not theory and you've taken algebraic topology and low dimensional topology or something else, you can mention it explicitly on your application just to show that you are ready for your graduate studies and to show that you are qualified. Let me give you an example of a paragraph describing one of my research projects. So here it is. Having spent high school years pursuing astrophysics research in Russia, I developed an interest in the planetary sciences and approached professor about working on hot Jupiter research my freshman spring of college. Transiting hot Jupiters are the most intensively studied category of exoplanets, planets orbiting stars other than the Sun. Photometric and spectroscopic observations of transits provide information about the planet's size, mass, orbit and atmosphere. However, since many of the follow-up observations are time-critical, observers need the ability to predict future transit times reliably and precisely. The easiest way to improve our ability to predict future transits is to measure new transit times, a process known as refreshing the ephemerides. In this work, I developed a database of transit times and updated ephemerides for hundreds of planets. We then used our database to search for long-term transit timing variations, determining several planetary systems that may exhibit interesting physical effects such as tidal orbital decay. We published our paper in the Astrophysical Journal Supplement Series in 2022, where we also reported the detection of a new planet, NGTS 11C. In addition, I presented this work at the American Astronomical Society's Topical Conference Series in Exoplanets in Las Vegas in May 2022. After we've discussed all of your previous research experiences, you can spend one paragraph talking about your extracurricular activities. Even though this point is a bit controversial, so I've heard some people say that you shouldn't talk about your extracurricular activities in your statement of purpose because it is irrelevant to the kind of researcher that you are. I disagree with this point. I think that especially if you did some work related to education or increasing access to educational opportunities for marginalized students or something like that, and maybe you want to become a professor in the future, then it's actually very important to mention that you have had this kind of experiences working in the educational sector, and it might show that you might have broader impact in the future just because you think bigger and wider. When you're talking about your extracurricular activities, they should still be somehow relevant to whatever you want to do in the future. So for example, I'm interested in artificial intelligence and how it can empower society and increase access to educational opportunities for all. Therefore, it was relevant for me to mention educational projects that I have worked on in the past. Definitely think that you can mention one extracurricular activity that is meaningful to you because that's what makes you unique and will make your application different from all the others. At the very end of your statement of purpose, I recommend mentioning specific projects that you want to work on in graduate school. And before saying what projects you want to work on, you should go on the program's website and look at all of the faculty that are part of the department that you're applying to. 
and basically look into their research interests, what they're currently working on, and see if there is someone that you are interested to potentially work with. And in the last paragraph of your statement of purpose, you can include the projects that you work on, having done your online research of different professors in your department, and then mention names of specific professors that you want to work with. And this is extremely important because when you are admitted to a PhD program, usually or oftentimes you are admitted by a specific professor to work with them. If you don't do your research well enough and you put random professors, mention random professors in your statement of purpose that don't do anything that is interesting to you and they don't see a good research fit, it is unlikely that you will be admitted. You'll be admitted if there is a good research fit. So if there is a project that the professor is interested in working with in the next couple of years and you are also interested in doing that. And sometimes the websites of different labs and professors might be outdated. So the easiest and the best way to know what a particular professor is working on is to contact them via email. Just send them a brief email saying that you're applying to this PG program and you're interested in working with them and wanted to learn about their research interests and what they would want to work in the next couple of years, their research plans. And most crucially, if their lab has space and if they plan to admit PhD students during the current admission cycle. Because if they don't plan to admit PhD students and you mentioned that you want to work with this professor, it's not very useful because if this professor doesn't recruit any students this year, then they are not going to take care. So that's why it is important to do your research. It's going to take a lot of time, but I think it will pay off if you do it right. And if you are not used to reaching out to people via email, don't be afraid to send emails to different professors that you don't know. It's absolutely normal to reach out to professors when you're applying to graduate school to learn about their research interests. And sometimes they will say that they would be happy to meet with you online via Zoom, for example, and talk about um, their research plans. Or they might just reply via email or link to their recent papers so you can learn more. Or maybe they might say that they don't recruit students this year, but it's totally fine. Or also they might just not respond and it's also completely fine. But you should definitely reach out to professors to learn more about their research. As I said, the last paragraph of your essay should be basically what you want to work on in graduate school and what faculty you want to work with. At the very end, you could write one or two sentences explaining why a particular graduate program is a good fit for you. So, for example, if you want to do artificial intelligence, maybe this particular graduate program has, you know, a data science initiative or an artificial intelligence initiative, or maybe they just hired a lot of new faculty that you're really excited about working with. I think this all counts so definitely explain why you're applying to a particular program that's what i wrote at the very end of my essay my long-term career goal is to advance general interpretable artificial intelligence systems to empower humanity in addressing many global challenges ethically and responsibly during my graduate studies i want to fuse topological data analysis with machine learning to develop more robust efficient and interpretable artificial intelligence models i hope to work with professor x on developing geometric methods for machine learning and Professor Y on infusing machine learning with topology, which are the research directions we discussed during our brief Zoom conversations. With the breadth of the applied math research at Harvard and the many machine learning initiatives available on campus, such as the Center for Research and Computation and Society, I believe that my interdisciplinary background and goals would make for a good fit with many other research groups. Now I'm going to share a few tips that will hopefully make your application better. First of all, in your statement of purpose, ideally, I know it might be difficult because there isn't a lot of space, but ideally you should show that you have some level of persistence and you don't give up when challenges arise. Basically, you want to show why you will stick around in grad school, why you want to quit after one year when things will get challenging, for example. Graduate school is a long journey and you want to demonstrate that you have some level of resilience and persistence that will help you get to the finish line. I also think it is extremely important to show your ability to zoom out and see the big picture whenever you work on any kind of research project. Because oftentimes when you work on research projects as an undergraduate, you are assigned projects by your advisor and you might not necessarily know the motivation for any given project or why you're doing a particular thing. And I think it's a big limitation because if you want to be a successful researcher, you want to be able to see the big picture and identify important questions in the field that you're interested in. And if you can show that, 
you can do that it's really valuable another thing i wanted to mention is that when you write your statement of purpose just in terms of style you want to make sure that your paragraphs are of approximately the same size just so the essay looks consistent coherent and has some flow also pay attention to anything at your school that might help you with your graduate applications for example in my university there were a couple of different admissions workshops that were led by current PG students at Princeton and it was quite valuable because I was able to get some feedback on my statement of purpose from current students they basically answered all of the questions that I had just be aware of what's going on and take advantage of the resources that you have at your hand also when you're writing your statement of purpose your first draft will not be phenomenal you should not expect it to be your final draft draft you will definitely have to iterate multiple times i think i iterated i don't know how many times probably 10 times at least i also send out my statement of purpose to different friends and mentors that i had who were very generous with their feedback and helped me improve my essay and when you're applying to graduate programs you can definitely reuse your statement of purpose for different schools just changing the name and the particular things that are relevant for a given program so for example when you're mentioning the resources available at a given program you should tailor it to wherever you are applying to but you can definitely reuse the paragraphs about your research experience your goals and motivation and stuff like that that is all that I wanted to share in this video. If you found it useful, feel free to leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna share more tips and advice on graduate admissions and PhD studies in the future. And I'll also share my experience as a PhD student at Harvard. So if that's something that's interesting to you, then please subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to reply. I will see you very soon. Bye.